one of the greatest rescue and rehabilitation movements in history, celebrates its 25th anniversary this year, Youth Aliyah, which organized the escape and emigration to Israel of young Jewish boys and girls doomed by the atrocity decrees of Nazi Germany. In Israel, they found life and hope, and they, in their turn, were able to offer life and hope to other youngsters doomed in other lands of persecution who were able to come to Israel and build a future for themselves, their people, and their homeland. This is how it started, Germany 1933. Hitler comes to power. Brutality, violence, the burning of holy Jewish books, and later, the burning of Jews. Out of this was born Youth Aliyah. Get the children out at least. Bring them to Palestine, Israel, the Jewish national home, where they can grow up free, independent, and shake off the grim nightmare of persecution. The first group to escape from Germany arrives on the shores of the Holy Land. Henrietta Zold is there to meet them. She it was, together with Recha Freyer, who conceived the idea of rescue and emigration to Israel. The youngsters are taken to their new homes in pioneer farm villages throughout the country. But the gates of Palestine were not always open. The country was then administered by a British mandate and immigration was restricted. Youth Aliyah was not daunted. Immigrants were brought in illegally by the Jewish underground defense movement, Haganah, young folk among them. Some were aboard such embattled Haganah vessels as al and Exodus 1947. Youth Aliyah's rescue operations prospered. At the beginning of World War II, other Jewish children were rescued from the onward sweep of conquering Nazi troops. They were brought to Palestine all the way round from Tehran and are known to this day as the Tehran children. After the war, there were demonstrations of protest by the Israel public against the British policy of keeping the gates of Palestine closed, even to those who had survived Hitler's concentration camps. But they came despite the ban, braving the blockade of the British Navy. Some were caught and taken to detention camps in Cyprus. Among them were youngsters. But Youth Aliyah managed to persuade the British to release the children and youth from the barbed wire camps and come to Palestine. To those left behind, they bid Shalom and see you in Israel soon. Many were thus able to witness the historic raising of the flag of independence and the proclamation of the State of Israel on May the 14th, 1948. With Jewish self-government, the gates of Israel were swung wide open to receive the hundreds of thousands of Jewish refugees and immigrants anxious to rebuild their own shattered lives and their national home. Each day they poured into the country. They came by ship and they came by plane. And as soon as they touched Israel's soil, they were taken off to start their new life.
The children, mostly orphaned, were brought to special youth villages cared for by youth aliyah. And since that Independence Day in May, there was an extensive widening of the scope of youth aliyah, caring for, educating and training the youth immigrants in Israel for independent and productive life. On arrival in their youth village, they are issued with clothing and blankets, shown their living quarters, given medical examination. There are special villages for children and others for teenagers. To the normal educational curriculum for the youth is added vocational training. In most villages, the accent is on agriculture. The finest instructors in the country are assigned to the youth aliyah groups. Moshe Cole, the current head of youth aliyah, is a frequent and welcome visitor. Youth Aliyah children and teenagers are cared for in 270 Youth Aliyah villages and regular collective settlements, kibbutzim, throughout the country. They live, learn and work in a youth society, learning the art of self-help and mutual help. For the young children, the school curriculum is the standard elementary pattern. For the older ones, the standard is that of the best secondary schools in the land. This particular youth aliyah village, run by the late Dr. Tzvi Lehmann, has a special Einstein room with bequests from the great Jewish scientist who was his friend and a devoted patron of youth aliyah. The older children spend a few hours each day on agriculture and attached to each youth village is a farm estate with expert instructors. The youngsters learn to farm at an early age plowing both with animals and by tractor. They learn the law of the fields and what to do in the different seasons. They learn all about trees. when and how to plant and prune. They learn how to reap the harvest by combine and with scythe. Later, when they complete their stay in the Youth Aliyah village, they will go out as a group to establish their own farm settlement in one of the pioneer regions of the country. For they absorb during their training not only the expert techniques of farming, but also the intangible spirit of idealism.
Orchards and groves are always an attraction for the youngsters. And all look forward to the picking season. The school farm has everything, from beehives and orange plantations to poultry runs. And they also learn all about animal husbandry and the special crossbred herds that withstand the hot climate and give maximum yields. Youth Alia also maintains a number of vocational training schools in its villages. For the boys, there are carpentry and metal workshops with the emphasis on agro-mechanics, the fashioning, repair and maintenance of farm equipment. For the girls, there is cutting, sewing, spinning and weaving, all under expert instruction. There is also time for relaxation in the time-honoured village style. And physical training and sport are not neglected. They learn to keep fit and they learn the art of self-defence. Later, when they go out to man a frontier farm settlement, they will not only have to till the fields, but know how to defend themselves from attack by marauders from across the border. Part of their school programme is to visit frontier settlements similar to one they will themselves establish after graduation. This one is Be'er Ora in the southern Negev near Eilat, where the desert is gradually being conquered and wilderness turned into smiling gardens. In the early days of youth Aliyah, before the creation of the state, the youngsters played their part in the defence of Jewish settlement against Arab attack. They served in the ranks of the Haganah defence movement fighting, defending, and doing their turns on guard. They also helped to set up the famous watchtower settlements, which were often attacked on the morrow of their establishment. They lived, worked, and guarded with the new settlers. Later, when they were old enough, they established their own watchtower settlements being helped in their turn by new youngsters whom Youth Aliyah had rescued. In this way, Youth Aliyah graduates established scores of farm villages in the Galilee and the Negev. Many joined the ranks of Nahal, the fighting and pioneer corps of the Israel army, and also established frontier settlements in remote outposts. of independence, youth Aliyah graduates did their bit, serving on all fronts. On Independence Day parades, there were members of youth Aliyah in every formation. As a tribute to youth Aliyah, communities in many lands founded special villages to help youth Aliyah cope with the many new problems of mass immigration. This is called the Swedish village and is visited by the mayor of Stockholm together with Mr. Moshe Cole. It was founded by a non-Jewish organization from Sweden to care for sick and crippled children of Youth Aliyah. This is Youth Aliyah's Swiss village for backward children. This is called Juliana's village after the Queen of the Netherlands, also for handicapped children.
It is visited by the President of the State and the Dutch Ambassador to Israel. Wingate Village was founded with the help of the Jewish community of Britain in memory of the great General Ord Wingate, devoted friend of Israel. It is opened in the presence of his widow, the Prime Minister and leader of Youth Aliyah. And this is Ramat Hadassah, the main reception centre of Youth Aliyah, where the youngsters are examined and then assigned to the most suitable Youth Aliyah village in the country. The President visits the Youth Aliyah Centre for the opening of the new synagogue. Youth Aliyah, which is an integral part of the Jewish Agency, is supported from overseas by Youth Aliyah branches, by WITSO, and by the American Hadassah Organization. Hadassah has been responsible for the establishment of a number of youth hostels named after Anne Frank. The cornerstone of one of them is laid by President Ben Svi. Some of the recent Youth Aliyah arrivals were from Eastern European lands where they had been unable to receive a Jewish upbringing. Some of them are received by the President and his wife at their residence in Jerusalem. Each is given a Hebrew Bible. Youth Aliyah rightly enjoys a high international reputation and leading world figures have come to Israel to see the work at first hand. Most beloved of all is Mrs. Eleanor Roosevelt, world patroness of Youth Aliyah. On her first visit, she dedicated a youth village which bears her name. With her was Mrs. Vera Weitzman, widow of Israel's first president. Youth Aliyah is proud of the part it has played in the revival of Israel and the refashioning of a nation. It has rescued, cared for and educated scores of thousands of children to constructive, happy and dedicated citizenship. And it has vastly aided the welding together of young immigrants from a variety of different countries. These are the children who were plucked from the burning by Youth Aliyah. Today, they live and work, laugh, sing and dance. They, the children and youth, are Israel's most cherished treasure. 